What happens when you don't eat? Well, you get hungry. And what happens when you get really hungry? Well, just when everyone stops talking in the room and there's a big silence, your stomach yells, hey asshole, it's time to feed me. But what happens when you don't? Stay tuned and find out. What's up guys? And welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go over intermittent fasting. And before I get started, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and click subscribe uh, so you can be informed on my tools that I'm going to provide you here. So let's get started on intermittent fasting. Go over the 101 of intermittent fasting. What is it? Intermittent fasting is a way to eat where you follow a time limit or an eating window is what it's commonly referred to within the intermittent fasting community. And the most common window versus fasting I've seen is 16 hours fasted versus 8 hours eating. So what does that mean? Let's say you go to bed at night and you wake up in the morning and let's say it is 9 a.m. Most people would say, oh, you got to pound those calories if you want to. You got to make sure you get some protein in for protein thermogenesis because we all know that protein is going to help you lose a pound a week. What happens when you, if you don't eat? Are you going to lose your gains? Absolutely not. What's going to happen is, let's say you wake up at 9 and you don't eat until 12 noon. 12 noon hits and you can eat until 8 p.m. And as soon as 8 hits, you can no longer eat for the rest of the night, which is probably normal for most people. The more experienced you are, now I've never done a day long fast. I, I have never done that. But the more experienced you are in intermittent fasting, you get the shorter eating window you can theoretically get to. And that, that should, by theory, help you lose more weight, okay? Now let's talk about implementing this into your diet or creating an intermittent fasting diet. You sleep for a huge portion of your day, around one third, okay? You can use that as your fasting window or at least a, a, a large part of it, okay? Breakfast literally means to break your fast. So if you wait a little bit longer to break your fast, you are in, I guess indirectly or unintentionally intermittent fasting because you're taking longer to eat or if you don't eat breakfast in the first place that is intermittent fasting at its core now it just depends on how long you eat for so let's talk about intermittent fasting and how it applies to someone who is not lifting who's not going to the gym not doing cardio consistently you actually don't have to take in any less calories than what you're already eating this is the one well there's a couple but this is the first tool diet tool that I'm talking about on the series guys that has nothing to do with the calories it has all to do with the nutrient timing and it's a I think that's a very overlooked part of a diet nutrient timing when you take in certain macronutrients and why the first time you do this for like the first week maybe two weeks and even a month if you're if you're overweight and you've never done this before the weight is going to fall off of you. I've done intermittent fasting, so I was like everyone else. I would you know, wake up in the morning and eat oatmeal. I would go about my day, every two to three hours I would have a meal, a meal. So I was eating six, seven meals a day, just like everyone else. And I was having the hardest time reaching my goal weight for some reason. There's gotta be a better way. And I, I found intermittent fasting. Actually, the thing that really got me turned on to it was because I, I think I saw a video of the Hodge twins doing it. And I also read up on it, and um, the actor who played Wolverine, I don't know his name, but the actor who played Wolverine in X-Men, he is kind of has that as a staple that he does. And if you ever seen his movies, it's pretty freaking jacked. Yeah. So um, I said, hey, why the hell not? And I risked it all, guys. I risked it all for the diet. I risked the gains, and surprisingly, the gains are still there, and I've made some on top of it. So what does this mean for you? the non-lifter. This does two things for you. It helps you get more water in because in intermittent fasting, water is your best friend. When you're feeling hungry and you start to get the, uh, your, the, the stomach rumbling, drink water. And you're going to increase your water intake immensely. So what helped me is always having a, a jug on you. Now, I know that not everyone wants to walk around looking like a gym rat with the gallon water jug 
and the meals in the backpack and you don't want to do that but maybe bring a water bottle around and instead of having a, a little 16 ounce water bottle maybe go to the store and buy a 32 ounce or one of the um, maybe a 64 ounce water bottle that made things a lot easier for me uh, and not only does it help you get more water which is everyone needs more water but it also helps you build discipline if you guys, if everyone ate when they were hungry, I know America is already pretty fat as it is, but I think that we would be a little bit fatter. You gotta have a little bit of discipline whenever you're, you're, you are doing an intermittent fasting diet because the first couple of days are gonna be rough. You're gonna feel like that your, your cheeks are getting sucked in, that you're gonna die of malnutrition, but I'm telling you, as soon as you get past those three, four days, that first week, you're gonna be golden. And the weight's gonna just gonna fall off, you guys. And 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 the only reason that I am uh, that I like this is because of the results that I had. Now, speaking of the results that I had, I'm actually gonna put a picture up here on the screen, and it's gonna be of when I tried intermittent fasting combined with carb backloading. Now, I haven't gotten to a carb backloading uh, diet tool belt video yet, but I will. I combined those two, and I had just probably the best results that I've ever had coming off of a um, of a bulk. When I started intermittent fasting that first week, it's almost like I couldn't keep weight on. And I didn't, I, I did not change my calories. I didn't eat differently except for the eating window. I just ate during a shorter period of time in the day. And it was so easy to do. So, is it practical? Does Is it sustainable? I think it's it's not the most practical and it's not the most sustainable. Why? Because, well, if you don't have if you have a life that is kind of, um, I guess it, it's it's not the same every single day. Maybe some days you're on call. You work night shift. You work day shift that other day. That's going to be hard for you to do. Now, can you do it? Yeah. But at some but sometimes you're going to go a long time without eating, especially if you're on your feet all the time. It's hard to. You know, at work, shovel food in your mouth for, you know, if, if work is part of your eight hours. And it's hard to fit a whole day's worth of calories in a, in, a, in a lunch break. You know what I mean, guys? So it's not the most practical if you have a, uh, a flip-flop schedule or a schedule that is not set in stone all the time or that you can't plan for ahead. If you have one of those nine to five jobs or a schedule that, is, that, that, that you know ahead of time, Intermittent fasting is huge for you. It can help really help you attain your fitness goals, especially losing weight. Let's talk about the uh, lifter who was just looking to lose weight, maybe coming off a bulk like I was. If you saw that picture, I think the picture speaks for itself. Um, I gained strength and I gained muscle. And if you guys don't believe me, that's totally your prerogative. But I have no reason to lie. I'm, I'm, there, there's no intermittent fasting uh, company out there that would spawn, that is going to sponsor me or that is sponsoring me. So um, I'm just telling you of what I've experienced and you can take it or leave it. I have no reason to lie. Anyway, um, whenever I was at my heaviest, which was 197 pounds, okay, I could um, bench press probably um, 70s in both hands both hands sorry so 70 pound dumbbells at the time we didn't have a barbell bench we had a Smith machine a really crappy Smith machine uh, Smith machine I could do uh, two plates on each side so that was 180 okay I wasn't the strongest but I was definitely the fattest that's for damn sure <laughs> um, but at the end of it I've lost um, 36 pounds and I do believe that most of it was fat and water it's gonna happen um, but in the combination of carb backloading and intermittent fasting, I was able to lose 36 pounds and my back is so cut up. You can look at that picture. It is so cut up and it's probably the best I've looked and it had to, had to have been because of the lighting because I think I even looked better then than I looked whenever I competed two years later. Insane. It was insane. So um, whenever I was done, I was bench pressing uh, 90s in each hand. Um, and I don't remember all of my uh, maxes that I hit, but um, I'm telling you that I either stayed the same with, when, with my squats, I might have gone up a little bit, and with my deadlift, I might have gone up a little bit. And 
don't get me wrong, guys. I know that ne not necessarily you don't always have to gain muscle to get stronger, but whenever you drop 36 pounds, I don't have any sort of um, uh, scientific studies that I'm that are using to back my uh, my experience, but I'm just telling you what happened to me. You can take it or leave it. Let's um, keep on the the, experience, the the lifter looking to lose weight. This is going to be a good tool for you because muscle preservation is key and the ability to gain muscle is key for you. You don't want to have to take you know, three step backwards because all you want to do is look better in, on the beach. This is going to be a good tool for you because you aren't depriving your body of calories at all. In, in theory, you don't have to do that. So you're able to get your protein, you're able to get your carbs, you're able to get your fat right off the bat. So the only thing that's changing is when you eat and how long you have the ability to eat for. Um, is this sustainable to a certain degree? Again, you have to know what your schedule is like. If it's flip-flopped, probably not. If it is, yeah. One of the good parts of intermittent fasting is that you're not going to gain weight if you go, if you have a 20-hour um, a fasting window and a 4-hour eating window one day, and then the next day something comes up and you have to have a 16-hour uh, fasting window and a eight hour fasting window. You're not gonna gain weight because of it. I get you, you might not gain, lose as much weight in that week or on that day that what you anticipated, but, you're, but just like if you go off of a diet, like if you're on keto and you have a couple you know, candy bars, you're not gonna gain weight because of that. Let's talk about the advanced lifter who is looking to build muscle and strength. The tools that I'm gonna be talking about for you guys here is that are only good for those in this category, in the advanced lifters category, who are looking to keep their waist in check, you still want to keep that muscle that you've worked so hard to, to get. In theory, and like I said before, I've done it. I've lost weight and gained muscle and strength while doing this. I know what you guys are going to say. That, well, you, you, you didn't just intermittent fast, Vince. You intermittent fast and you did car backloading. That's true. It's not 100% correct, but I, I have a, a, a hard time believing that car backloading was the only reason that I got cut up and stronger and, and put on more muscle. So take it as you will, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that maybe it's a 50-50 split in between who gets the credit, intermittent fasting and car backloading. So, um, believe it or not, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys like this. And if you guys have any questions about the information I gave to you, go ahead and type something down in the comments section. Uh, let me know what you want to talk about next. I have a lot of things that I would like to make videos on. And, uh, but if you give me a little direction, I can uh, go which way you guys want me to. I'm a man of the people. I'm a man of the people. And I'll fight for you and your jobs. And I'm not going to get into it. Click subscribe and a thumbs up if you liked the video, guys. And I do want to thank you for watching the whole thing. You guys are troopers. Talk to you soon, guys.